For this video, I am working off of 01, creating puppet meshes.aep, which is inside the chapter 2 folder. So if you have the source files, feel free to open up this reference. If not, hopefully you have a character file you can follow along with. What I want to do now is begin the process of creating my puppet. And to do this without creating separate puppets for all the layers, we're going to pre-compose the Red Thunder separated composition we currently have on screen. And to do this, I'm just going to come over to that composition in the project panel, click and hold and drag down to the new comp button. When we do this, you can see we automatically create a second composition. And what we've essentially done here is put the composition within another composition. You can see we have the hierarchy right up here. If I were to double click on this composition, Red Thunder Separated, we can go back into those individual layers. But again, we just want to work with this new composition that we made. And to make this easier to work with, I'll come up to the Red Thunder Separated 2 composition, click once, hit enter, and we're just going to rename this now to Red Thunder Dash Walk Cycle and then hit enter. Now it'll be easier to tell which composition you're in. The next step is to start creating the puppet in this new composition. To create a puppet, we'll need to use the puppet pin tool. You can access this with command P or control P if you're on Windows. Keep in mind that the puppet pin tool does share the slot with two other tools. You have the puppet overlap tool and the puppet starch tool. You can use Command P or Control P to cycle through all of these until you get to the Puppet Pin tool. Creating a puppet is just as easy as clicking on the screen. What I want to do is zoom in first on the left arm. So this one right here. I'll come up to the top of the arm and click once. And this will create a mesh. You can see that we have a mesh that goes all the way around the arm. And we also have the anchor point or the pin that we placed at the top. While we are inside of a mesh, we can continue to add multiple points, depending on how many triangles we have set for the mesh. Let me come down here and add two more pins. I'll add one to the elbow and we'll also add one to the hand near the bottom. You can see at the top, we have expansion and triangle options. This allows us to set the flexibility of the mesh as well as the expansion. So let's say we are working with this arm and later on we go in Photoshop and make a correction. This could change the size of the arm. And if you already have animation in place, if the arm were to breach the mesh, you're going to get a glitchy looking result. The object needs to be contained and wrapped around the mesh in order for it to work correctly. So the expansion allows you to go in and make those corrections. But keep in mind that if you have existing animation in place and you change the expansion, it also changes the shape of the triangles, which changes the way the mesh works. So just keep that in mind when making your adjustments. And as for the triangles, the more triangles you have, the more flexible, the more points you can add to a mesh. In this case, we're just going to leave it at 300 and we'll bring the expansion down to about five. That way we have a little bit of room to work with. So with that mesh now set, we can move over to the second mesh and we'll click once on the top of the second arm or the right arm to create a second mesh. We can come down and click on the elbow and then down to the bottom of the hand to add the third pin. If you look in your effects panel, you'll see we now have two meshes lined up and ready to go. So let's keep going. Using the space bar, I'm just going to click and drag and bring my workspace down here so we can see the feet. And starting with the left once again, I'll come up and we'll click once on the top of the leg we will click near the center of the leg to create that knee joint. And then we can come down here and unlike the hand, we're going to actually add three points to the bottom. So there's one pin, two pins, and then three. So toes, arch, and then heel. 
and repeat the steps on the other side. So click, click, and then come down, add to the toes, the arch, and the heel. Finally, we're going to come up to the main portion of the character, the head and body. And we'll start at the top here. We're just going to click on the top of the antenna to add a point. We can come down to the hair and at the top of that mesh, add a point. Come down to the bottom portion of the hair, add a point. We're just going to move down where we see the neck. Near the center of the neck, we can add a pin. And then we'll come down here to, so close to the bottom center of the torso, we can add a pin. And then we'll come down and add a pin to the bottom of the pelvis. We now have five meshes for the puppet. And we're set to now reassemble the character so we can begin animation.